Hi, how are you? Hope you're all well. I um, am just finishing off a very busy work week. I apologize if you can see that I'm, I'm tired. Um, usually it shows very clearly on my face. So, um, but I really wanted to get, um, on the camera and, uh, didn't want to miss any more uploads. I apologize for the, for the missed uploads, um, these past few weeks. So I'd like to discuss today the topic of memorization. This is actually part three in a series that I started a long time ago. And um, I had done two parts. The first one, I'll link them in below in the description. But the first one is uh, was just kind of a long intro with um, you know a little bit of discussion and some definitely some tips are in there, but um they um, are not as detailed. And the second one is where I just sit down with my violin and I um, I study the Alemand, you know, together with you. So we just start, you know, a little bit of the beginning and I kind of walk you through the thought process of how I learn and, you know, try to commit these notes to memory. The third one I'd like to discuss today is the importance of uh, making sections in your piece. So uh, it's very difficult to do a thorough job, you know, memorizing your piece if you're just working from beginning to end, beginning to end, you know, top to bottom over and over and over. It kind of promotes a like a um, like a streaming type of memory. And what's dangerous about that is that um, once it's interrupted, it's very difficult to recover. So if it's interrupted, you can't just easily pick up and then, you know, move on. So, uh, so I highly uh, recommend uh, sectioning, you know, them off. And then you can work with the sections that you have. First thing I do is I ask the student, do you want to use letters or numbers? So we're going to just, you know, number them sequentially or letter them from beginning to end. You don't have to look at musical form or anything like that at this point. We're just making them into parts and we're just labeling them. That's, that's all we're doing. And so they'll say numbers or they'll say letters. It has to make sense to them. And, you know, in, in the past, I've used uh, letters. And I and I think about like what the letter means to me. Like if I know um, F is a difficult section that I'm learning at the time, and um, then I think like Frank. You know, <laughs> maybe I remembered there was this Frank I used to know who was a very difficult person. And so when I know that the section F is coming up, then I have to like kind of really buckle down and and try my best to remember the notes. So sometimes it's kind of fun to use letters for that reason, or maybe numbers are more significant to you. So certain numbers have, you know, certain qualities in your mind and, you know, that works too. So then we um, go through, I, with my student, I go through the piece together. And at this point, it's usually easiest if you already kind of know the piece pretty well, you're able to play it pretty decently from beginning to end. And um, 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 I, I believe that the memorization process has already begun. It just hasn't been very, you know, at the front of the player's mind, you know, at this point. But if you can play the piece pretty well from top to bottom, then there's some, you know, things that are already been, uh, that have already been deposited into the long term, you know, memory storage. And so, uh, anyway, we go through and we decide where the sections will be. And again, I ask the student, it has to make sense to the player. So I asked them, does this look like more of a section end or does that look more of like a section end? And sometimes it's not very obvious where the sections end. Um, you know, pieces like Monte Chardas or Luli Gavat or, um, uh, you know, um, theme and variations, you know, those are very obvious where the sections should go, you know, if that makes sense. You should also try to keep the sections about you know, similar lengths, but sometimes it's very difficult to do. So it really depends on the piece you're, you're playing. So then um, you just go through and, you know, and you just mark them all up. And sometimes you might change your mind. So, you know, during the week you're practicing and you realize, oh, I don't think this one's working so well, then 
you can change it. But after a little while, you should try not to change it anymore and you want to get used to it. So then what you can do is see if you already know um, the first section, if you have it memorized already, usually you do. And then um, uh, what I do is if there are some sections that have been challenging anyway, and they're going to need to practice it anyway, I'll say, hey, you know, why don't we do a special focus on section C and K and M this week? Um, because they're already difficult. And my motto is that you shouldn't just, you know, memorize for the sake of memorizing. Uh, what works best, in my opinion, is that you practice a section over and over and over, working on intonation over and over, or you're working on your bow strokes over and over, or you're trying to fix your bow distribution, or you're trying to work on dynamics. So it's always better to have something you're working on, and then you, um, you know, you start to notice more details, and, you know, your knowledge of that spot gets deeper and deeper. And so um, you're already going over and over and over it uh, because you're focused on something, right? Something musical or what, whatnot or technical. And then what happens is the notes just begin to, you know, kind of seep into your into your long term memory. And notice how I said I'm going to have the student focus for one week on like section C, K, and M, for example. Um, I don't really tell them you have to memorize this because then they start to focus too much on like, oh, I have to know these notes. And um, usually it doesn't go so well. So I, I, I kind of tell them, hey, we're not going to try to memorize it, but you test me, okay? You see if what I said is correct or not. So just don't try to memorize it, but work on it. Work on these sections over and over and over and get you know, whatever it is accomplished, like, you know, you have to clean up all your string crossings, or you have to, you know, um, get your bowings right, or, you know, whatever it is. And, um, or fix all your pitches, if there's some, you know, pitch issues. So anyway, um, you do that, and then they come back after a week. And then um, I see if, you know, it's sounding better, if it's sounding clean. And then after that, then I say, hey, let's just casually, you know, close the book <laughs> and see if you have it memorized. And so I just have them, you know, play through it. And often they can play it without their music already. If they can't, then there's just like maybe this one or two little moments of like a, a hang up, you know, where they can't remember the note. And so um, what then what you want to do is you have to be very specific. Um, if you have, you know, you're trying to take that one section you've been working on and you just can't, you know, get through it from memory, then you have to specify which note exactly did the memory fail you. It has to be the very first note that you could not remember. This is crucial. And then you should circle it. Okay. And maybe put today's date on it so that you know that on this date, you had a memory slip on that note. If you had memory slips on the very next note and the very next note also, it's fine. But really the most important thing is you to mark the very first one that went wrong. I hope that makes sense. And then, and then once you know, you know, sometimes it really helps to even say that name. So say B, you know, so like you're playing along doo, 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 and then there's that note. So that's a B right? So to say it out loud, it also helps sometimes. And then so, you know, you can either allow the student to, um, you know, play it a few times while looking, or you can just put it away again and try it again and remember that that exact note. Often, if you can remember that exact note, then the other ones, you know, kind of come along easily. Um, if it's a really tough passage, then a few of those notes are going to be weak in a row. But once you, you know, pinpoint it, it's so much easier. The problem I see over and over again, time and time again with my students is that they go, oh, it's somewhere over here. And that's not good enough. You have to be able to say it's this note. It's that note. You have to be able to point to the note. I often actually literally ask them to that here, point to the note that you missed first and they're not able to do it. So um, it's funny. Oftentimes it's just 
simple awareness, you know, that will help. So um, I think that's what makes my practice a a little more efficient than a student's practice is because my awareness level is quite high. So when things go, you know, wrong, or, you know, I don't get the desired effect, I can pinpoint boom, 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 what, you know, what it was exactly. And so the process is much quicker. So the awareness, uh, aspect is is really really crucial so if you can you know build your aware- awareness you know gradually then you're going to benefit and you'll have you know grand returns you know later so anyway um i hope um you know that kind of gives you enough tools you know to get started on your project um I don't know, you know, where you're at, you know, with your piece or with your memorization goals or what it is, but um, I would say just, you know, um, if you don't have anything specific you're trying to memorize, just pick a piece that you know fairly decently already and then get started. It might be a fun, like, side project. Um, If you um, already, you know, are following me up to now, all the things that I just, you know, told you, and you want more than the, um, then there's a lot more, there's many more steps to this, but you can do one more bonus thing, which is um, if you uh, notice that certain, you know, sections return, right? Um, Then you want to make note if those two sections, let's say B and uh, O, are exactly the same, or you think they're, you know, the same, then you, you just go through and you make sure that they, they are exactly the same. Even if there's a little bit of an articulation difference or a dynamic difference or a little bowing difference, I would um, make note of that, you know, so say like C and O are very similar, but they're not exactly the same. And you just, you know, kind of name off, you list off the things that are different. Um, often there'll be sections that sound very alike, but actually have a different ending, you know? So that's like, like an A and A prime situation. That would be another really beneficial thing to do because those, um, places where it's similar yet different, that, those are the places where you most likely might have a memory slip if you're in the middle of a performance. So I uh, hope that helps and um, uh, stay tuned. Um, I do, my uh, intention is to continue with the memorization series. So please let me know if you have any questions or any specific situations, you know, that have come up for you that, you know, you kind of want to, um, you know, uh, present to me. Please uh, leave a comment down below. I always love to see your uh, your comments. I really enjoy, you know, um, conversing uh, with you all. And I will go ahead and leave um, another memorization video from a long time ago that I that I've um, created. And uh, my information stands. You know, uh, it's an older video, but uh, I'm going to be you know covering some of these things in the future. So if you want to get a head start and, and watch um, some of these, then, then I will leave one for you here. Okay. Have a great day.